folks, it's finally here. The Art of the Brick has landed at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I'm gonna get a behind the scenes tour with Lego builder extraordinaire, Nathan Sawaya. Now we're inside the art gallery portion of Art of the Brick, where the more uh, famous, the more iconic pieces of artwork from around the world, human history you've created with Lego brick. Right, I wanted to take you know, pieces from art history and replicate them out of Lego. So, you know, how, how do you talk to a kid about the Mona Lisa? Well, what if that Mona Lisa was made out of Lego bricks? This is a medium they're familiar with, and it kind of opens the door into the art world and for they kids. Can, they can make it themselves. Exactly, sure, why not? Yeah. I mean, here we have an example of Klimt's The Kiss, you know, a very famous painting. But what I wanted to do, because I'm using Lego, which I think lends itself to three-dimensional really well. So I brought the sculpture, I brought the, the two-dimensional painting out and brought the subject matter out and made a three-dimensional sculpture of that two-dimensional painting. So what that means is, you know, I had to kind of come up with, well, what does this look like on the backside? What are the got sides? It. Because obviously the painting, we only see the front. Got it. So I got to have some fun with these master, you know, playing with the masters really, and kind of come up with my own idea of what it would look like on the backside. What do you think that some of these iconic artists, their history would think about you recreating their pieces with Legos? Well, I think as an artist, you do want to inspire, mm -hmm. and maybe they, they would understand that this is a way to reach a brand new audience. And they'd be like, wow, that would have been a lot easier <laughs> instead of just beating rocks and marble for a few Who years. Who knows? Why did we not have Legos back then? It's a good point. <laughs> Folks, Nathan has brought the Mona Lisa to Houston in Lego form. Yeah, it's uh, many, many Lego bricks and it's very pixelated when you see it up close because I'm using the Lego bricks just like pixels essentially to get the image. So actually when you step back, you really, you really see the Mona Lisa at that point. Now, I've never seen the actual Mona Lisa in person, but I do know that you can't get this close to it. Right, right, you can get much closer yeah, to sorry, the Lego I version. Get closer. Is it okay to, people aren't supposed to touch Art of the Brick. Well, I know everyone wants to because it's, it's bricks that they've played with, it's yeah. very tactile, but we discourage touching the artwork. Now, there are Lego bricks at the end of the exhibition that people can play with, okay. but for the art, we'd ask that you don't touch these don't, ones. Don't try to hug any of these things, especially the, uh, the, 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 what do you have over here? Yeah, we got the Venus de Milo over don't there. Don't hug Venus de Milo, even though she can't hug you back, she has no arms. She's got no arms. So, you can't you hug do? that thing, don't do it. Now here's one of my homeboys, Andy Warhol, pop artist extraordinaire. You created this portrait of Andy um, as a tribute to him. Yeah, it's an homage to Andy, really. You know, I, I wanted to just capture him out of Lego. And again, when I'm using a two-dimensional image, it's you really see it's just using the Lego-like paint, you know? You're using uh, a few different colors. It's really about light and shadow and negative space. Do you think Andy would have used Lego? I think he would have loved Lego. I, I'm surprised we, we didn't see him use Lego at, at all during his career. Now, Nathan, I love all these amazing pieces. How do you keep them all together? Oh, that's a great question. Now, everything is glued together. A little bit of glue on each individual brick as I'm working. Do they actually make special Lego glue? Well, I use a little uh, plastic adhesive that you would use. You know, you can get it at any hardware shop, but uh, it works pretty well and it keeps the bricks together. So when uh, we're shipping this artwork all around the world, it arrives in one piece. For this one here, a lot of people love this one, especially on social media. I love it because there's a really cool backstory about the Legos. Yeah, so all these Lego bricks are really recycled Lego. People contact me, they say, hey, we have all these Lego bricks we're getting rid of. Rather than have it go to a landfill, I'd rather use it to make art. So I take the bricks, I don't even sort them, you see it's just random colors put together, and then you get, I, I just use them to create art. And it's also, there's another element to this too, it's a peace symbol, international, uh, and there's so many different colors and layers to it. Exactly, so, you could say it's representing society. I really like it. Uh, so this one's my boy. Right, yeah. yeah. Tell me about this one, this is a very emotional piece. It is an emotional piece. In fact, when I debuted this for the first time, a woman started crying at the gallery, and I thought, you know, wow, this is, a, this is really impactful. And I think part of that is, you know, she saw this as a sculpture. She didn't see this as a toy. She didn't see this as, you know, a bunch of bricks. She really got something out of it, some more emotion out of it, and that was a, it was kind of a stepping stone for me. Like, re understanding that I was really impacting people with the art, and it wasn't just seeing a toy. Because I guess there is that level that some people who are novices to this, they see it as a novelty. 
Oh, for and sure. I'm not trying to like denigrate yeah, what you're doing, sure. but they see it as a novelty. And then they see something like this piece, and their heart starts to sort of beat differently. Their, their heart flutters. Exactly. You did exactly. your job. Right, exactly. And, and you know, when I started going to galleries early on and saying, oh, I make art out of Lego, they of course were like, oh, like cool. trains yeah. or castles? You know, yeah. they thought what they had seen at a toy store. And so it took a while for the art world to kind of get a hold of what I was doing and really understand, no, I'm, I'm creating human forms. I'm putting some emotion into these works. And this is an example of what can be done with, with Lego, but still make it art. What's the story behind my boy? Well, it, it, it's actually from a, another story that I had heard. And uh, I mean, it's just about you know what you see. It's about the loss of a child. It's, it's very sad. I totally see it. So you, you've done a picture of yourself. Yeah, it's a self-portrait. And when I'm thinking really hard, lightning comes out of my head. <laughs> there we go. Would, would this be a bricky? Like a selfie? Yeah, I got that. I, yeah, thank I, you for I that. I thought about that all night. I was just like, I, well done. This is, oh, all right, that's yeah. probably a wrap at that point. There we go, we're done. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, we were at a science museum, innovation, and I came up with bricky. Bricky. Is this also you, Nathan? Because um, seem a lot taller yeah, in no, Lego form. No, this is... And uh, redder. <laughs> yeah. This actually <laughs> was... Uh, when it debuted at a gallery, he was actually touching the ceiling. Oh. And hold, it looked like he was holding up the ceiling of the, of the room. However, the ceilings here at the museum are a little taller. So kind of lose that effect. Guys, you want to lower the ceiling? That's, if we could. I, just, I thought we were going to. But, oh well. He's also raising the roof. Moving on. All right, I have a lot of favorites here in Art of the Brick. The skulls are like really the skulls. cool. Thank you. These are, I mean, I would, I'd buy one of these and put this like in my house if I could afford your work. Wow, Nathan, all right. This well, is we really cool. Talk. There we go. But you have the skulls everywhere, like over here too. And like, yeah. especially, yeah. Well, I wanted to kind of play with the juxtaposition of, you know, real bright colors, bright Lego, you know, and to kind of play around with that symbol of death with yeah. that. And that's where these came from. I love the uh, gray and the red on this one. Thank you, thank you. This is actually a piece called Grasp. And what is happening here? This was inspired by, well, I used to be a lawyer and I decided to leave the practice to become a Lego artist. And a lot of people were, they were really negative with me. They thought I was making a mistake. They told me, no, don't do it. And so this sculpture was born out of those conversations this figure trying to pull away from all that negativity. And you see these arms are grasping at the figure, trying to pull it back. That's the idea behind it. It's you leaving the legal world for the Lego world. Something like it, exactly. Now we've used yellow uh, in a lot of our promotional material for the Art of the Brick. What's the story behind yellow? Well, yellow is one of those pieces, it's probably my most iconic piece, you might say, because more people contact me about yellow than any other sculpture I've done. It really resonates with folks for some reason. I think, you know, they see it. For me, it's about opening oneself up to the world. You know, people, adults, I think, see it as someone you know, giving their all so much that their soul is spilling out. Kids like it because there's guts coming out. But those guts are, you know, that very same toy they've played with all their lives, little Lego bricks. And it, it again, reminds the viewer of the medium that this is all created out of. Now, here's a dinosaur, something very close to our hearts here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. This is going to be one of the most popular pieces inside Art of the Brick. You think so? I really do. Um, as if we don't have enough dinosaurs, right. you've made this amazing representation of a T-Rex. Thanks. I'll take that. Yeah. 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 I actually, after my first solo art exhibition, I saw how many kids and families were coming to an art museum, some who've never been to the museum before. I thought, well, I want to give back to those kids. What do kids love? I love dinosaurs, so I spent the next summer creating this beast. Spent three months, about 80,000 bricks, and it got very tedious somewhere in the ribs section. <laughs> now here's the next step, Lego clothing. This is a Lego dress. It is a Lego dress. It's a Lego red dress. You see it blowing in the wind. This took about six weeks to create, and it was very difficult because I'm still using those rectangular pieces, but I really wanted that flow of the dress as if it's flying in the wind. And it, it took a while to get that to work. Yeah, creating the texture, I'm assuming, would have been probably just a real a real project to tackle here. Well, yeah, because when I'm working on a sculpture, you know, it's, it's the outside of a figure, say. You really don't see the interior of my sculptures. 
but for example on this you're seeing both sides so I really have to think about how it's going to look underneath you know above both sides of the flowing fabric making fabric out of Lego is not easy it doesn't seem like it no but the idea behind this is then we can take this and then integrate it into imagery and that's part of this gallery is about using these sculptures in photographs and because the photographs are digital there's a pixelization and my sculptures do have a pixelization look to them so it kind of works together so here's a model in front of an old-timey theater wearing the dress we just saw exactly and that's the idea is again integrating the sculptures into these kind of hyper realistic tableau where you see the dress is blowing in the wind the bricks are blowing off of it and it's it's kind of a little bit about like the construction of identity, right? I mean, all of us these days, we're, we're creating our own identity online. Well, here we're kind of playing into that a little bit, but construction also plays very well with Lego bricks, of course. Hey boy, come on, here you go. I got your yellows and browns and greens. And... All right, folks, The Art of the Brick, featuring the amazing work of Nathan Sawaya, will be here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science for many months to come. Come on, come on, it's your favorite. No, the, the mummies don't come to life at night. I mean, do you come to life at night? <laughs>